You're listening to a Frequency Podcast Network production. I've got to be honest with you about two things. First, when we began this podcast, exactly five years and almost 1,300 episodes ago, I sucked. I am amazed that they let me host it beyond the first few weeks. Which brings us to the second thing. I didn't think we'd last very long. It took us ages to get the audience to even 1,000 downloads an episode. It took us forever to make the show every day. And while everyone was very supportive and very helpful, it didn't really feel promising. But five years later, here we are, still here. And look, really, we owe it all to you. So we wanted to thank you by giving you an episode that stretches through the past half decade. And we'll begin with our very first recording. Please, pay attention to how incredibly idiotically fast I am speaking for some totally unknown reason. They legalized it. Except not quite yet. Not in time for Canada Day or your cottage getaway. But timeline and complications be damned, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and company are going to make sure you know that they kept this campaign promise at least. The new recreational cannabis regime will officially come into force on October 17th of this year. But there's a lot more that's got to happen before Canadians can actually buy the stuff. It's Monday, June 25th, and that's a long way from October 17th. Welcome to the summer of figuring out pot. It's fitting that our first episode was about pot, I think. But for all the comments that we sometimes get in reviews and in emails about why I pause in my delivery, or try to speak slowly. That is your alternative, okay? Listen, here's a worse one. After Trump's election in 2016, a lot of Canadians comforted ourselves by saying that type of leader could never win elections here. Wrong. And then one did, in Ontario at least, and now Maxime Bernier may be poised to attempt the same trick nationally next year. I hate myself just listening to that. But thankfully... For both your ears and my own lungs, I learned to slow down. And I have come over five years to absolutely love this job. We have been able to cultivate an amazing group of responsive, thoughtful listeners. We've been able to cover the news in a way that doesn't depend on clickbait headlines or hot takes to rile up an audience the way so much of digital media does. And we've been able to provide companionship and conversation to thousands of Canadians when they wake up every morning. And we also get to learn stuff, a lot of stuff, some of it good and hopeful and fascinating, most of it fascinating, actually, but also strange and odd and, you know, frequently downright scary. So today we'll take you through some of the biggest stories that we've covered. We'll revisit our favorite episodes and moments and pull a few things out of the archives that even we had forgotten about until we dove back in. Like this. I went out with an exterminator one day on, you know, for like four hours visiting different properties with rat problems. And I was so shaken by that experience that when I got home, I called another exterminator and hired that person to come to my house to do a walkthrough to tell me Hey, Even though you hadn't seen a rat. Yeah, haven't seen a rat in a year, but I was like, you know what? They could be here. They could be anywhere. They could be under the porch. They could be in the neighbor's garage. I mean, look at this election compared to the last one, uh, where it seemed like there were only three contenders and maybe the Greens as a possibility. Now we had debates with six different party leaders on the stage. The dynamic in, ca- in Canadian politics is changing a little bit at the moment. And we'll see how it looks, um, you know, tomorrow and beyond. Here's a tidbit that only a true fan of multiple Canadian daily news podcasts will appreciate. There was, at one point, two daily news podcast hosts on this program. One of them just didn't know it yet. When I worked at the Toronto Star a long time ago, my best friend at the paper was a reporter named Raju Mudar who had covered just about everything from news to sports to entertainment at one point or another. And so, when the streaming wars began, we thought it would be a lot of fun to chat with him about it. And it was. And Raju now hosts the Toronto Star's own daily news podcast and competes with us. 
which I mostly find funny and lovely until they beat us to a story and I hate them all over again. Raju Mudar is an entertainment reporter for the Toronto Star, and lately his job involves a lot of streaming TV. Hey, Raju. It's, it is taking up a lot. The streaming wars are keeping me busy. If there is a first and second act to the last five years, I know exactly where one ends and the other begins. Right near the end of 2021, I looked up from the desk in my little basement studio where I record this podcast and realized something startling. Sometime in the past month, we had officially been making this podcast remotely from our homes and basements and closets and desks for longer than we'd been making it in the studio every day. But of course, COVID changed everything, including our show, so it wasn't actually surprising. It more just drove home how screwed up our sense of time had become during this pandemic and how much time we'd spent covering it since a fateful day in early 2020 before anything was closing or COVID was even an emergency when Dr. David Fistman, a little known at that point, sorry, David, epidemiologist, joined me in the studio to assure us that actually everything was going to be just fine. Hi, David. Hello. Thank you for having me. No problem. It is my job to be kind of the voice of the audience in these situations. So my first question is just basically like, how terrified should I be? Um, is not at all an acceptable answer. I think not at all is probably the most accurate answer. It is a welcome answer. Yeah. I mean, don't be terrified. We've seen this movie before. The world is a large place, and um, this is a, a teeny-weeny infectious disease issue as of looks at watch the 22nd, and I think it's fine to travel wherever you feel like traveling to. Based I'm going on to California, now I feel a lot better about Do that. it. Yeah. Thanks, David. Thank you so much for having me. I got really sick when I got back from that trip. Fun fact. A few months later, though, in the middle of lockdowns, we had Dr. David Fisman back on the program. I think in terms of very big mistakes, I can think of three off the top of my head, and there are probably more. Um, I think one of them uh, uh, was, was, was aired publicly on your podcast back whenever we started doing this, I think might be early February, when uh, I, I said I, I really didn't think this was going to take off and be a big thing, that I, I, I thought they would likely contain it in China. So... Um, that turned out to be incorrect. And in fact, thinking about it, I think I'm up to at least four times that I've been extremely wrong about this, which I think mostly have to do with anchoring on prior experience with SARS. We, uh, it turns out, didn't learn that much from our prior experience with SARS, or maybe we learned a lot, but never put the lessons into practice. Anyway... I won't dwell on COVID. That's not why you're here right now. But all those clips do is remind me of lockdown and how we figured out as a small team that makes this podcast, how exactly we were going to do our work, how the world was going to go on, what our life would look like for either the next two weeks or the next two months, or I guess what turned out to be two years. Daddy, do you want to play with my toys? Daddy, do you want to play with my toys? Well, I'm going to do this work right now. Okay. Okay. I think it works. Can you hear me, Claire? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can. We're remote. Where are you right now, Claire? So I am at home right now. I'm sitting actually on the floor of my bedroom closet. Uh, I have a stool in front of me with my laptop on it. And then above me is a shelf where I put my phone and my flashlight is on so that I can see. Um, and yeah, I'm just sitting on my floor with a microphone in my hand. What's your makeshift studio like? I'm in what could best be described as a converted alcove next to our washer and dryer in the basement. We moved out a clothes horse and some garbage that was kicking around in the spare room. And I've got my laptop and my microphone and my Zoom recorder set up on top of a chest of drawers that uh, contains a number of things, including right now, uh, some canned food, of course. Nice. And this is where the big story is live for the foreseeable future. Since those early scary days, 
We've done more than 50 episodes dedicated solely to COVID. I'm not talking here about COVID's impact on the entertainment industry or on the future of work or any of that, just about the virus, the pandemic, life and death and all that stuff. We opted, understandably, I think, not to revisit any more of those because by now, all that unprecedented stuff is precedented. What is amazing, however, is just how many Canadian events now have been covered by us from that little alcove next to my washing machine with, uh, by now, some soundproof panels badly secured to the walls and a chair that I need to swap out for a new one every six months or so when the old one starts to squeak loud enough to be picked up on a mic. This pandemic has completely distorted any sense of time we might have had during the past few years. When I think of various episodes or news stories, I sometimes wonder if that thing happened last month or last year, or if that was back in 2020 when stuff was closed. I think it's a direct product of doing the exact same thing, a little differently, every single day for so long. But we have, when going back through these archives, pulled out three concrete themes that I think represent what the big story has done over the past few years. First, division. These are fraught political times. They were bad when we began this show. They're worse now. I'm sure there was a huge sigh of relief coming from the prime minister's office the moment that Joe Biden uh, took that oath of office and became the new president of the United States of America. So, yeah, I think things are going to get a lot easier when it comes to Canada-U.S. relations uh, moving forward over the next four years. Aliyev is the the base pleasing sort of hard line more right leaning own the libs end of this i think that that has limited growth potential and i don't really love viewing this through the frame of of money because look elections cost what they what they cost right but we just spent 600 million dollars on this to get back to where we started so I, I think people will feel like the last six weeks were a bit of a waste and i think they're i think they're right I think there are thousands of people, uh, particularly immediately around Parliament, who are there uh, because they are angry. They are there because they are threatened. They are there because they want to be heard. But there are other people there who are using these people to advance political agendas. The other thing that the big story does with regularity, of course, is cover bad news. Like, really bad news. In the span of about... 13 hours, a gunman in rural Nova Scotia, he killed 22 people, the worst mass shooting in, in this country's history. Right now, there are about 130,000 Russian forces that are positioned all around the Ukrainian border, essentially, uh, encircling it basically from the east and the north. I'm looking at you, but I can see the van going on the sidewalk and hitting everyone seen a lot of wildfires in the province in the last week or so. The most notable one is the one that has pretty much destroyed most of Lytton, uh, which is a smaller village here in BC. And this fire broke out a day after the village set the record for the hottest day ever recorded in Canada. See, good times. But listen. The last, and in my mind, the best kind of episodes we do are the ones that are most true to the ethos of this show. When a curious person talks to a smart person about a story or an event you might want to know more about. And when we go down that road, things aren't always bad. They are weird and fun and mysterious, sometimes even joyful. Last week, a reporter with CHCH TV caught the right person at the right time in front of the right St. Catherine's store to discuss Health Canada's new alcohol guidelines. Two drinks a week. What do you think of that? Well, that's just not uh, feasible, not in this country. Well, come on, man. Two drinks a week. What's that going to do for you? I mean, that doesn't even get you through a day. In this fellow's yard, uh, the, or this person's yard, the, the trapper 
set up a large-scale peacock trap and trapped Pearl and her chicks within it. And those birds were then moved to a petting zoo. So I could see the ends, the end coins on each one of those rolls. And just from a quick glance, I knew that each one of those rolls were counterfeit. So I, of course, checked one of the rolls just to see if it was just the end coins that I was unlucky enough to see or if it was the whole thing. And it turns out that the entire box was counterfeit, $1,000 of counterfeit toonies. One theory is that the current cycle of UFO news and madness is just a way to distract from, you know, something else that's happening, perhaps an advanced propulsion system. That will not be the last time you hear about UFOs or aliens, or maybe even peacocks, from us. And that was the big story five years of it, in fact. As I said, off the top, this is all thanks to you, our listeners. And I mean that in a very direct way. Because unlike television or radio, this podcast is never just on. It's not like somebody gave us a time slot or put us on the air and exposed us to an audience and... Some people listen just because we're there and they're bored. That doesn't happen. Everyone who has ever listened to The Big Story did it on purpose, deliberately. They made a choice and they chose us even if they only did it once and then never again. But without that choice, that's the whole ballgame. So from all of us here, Joe Fish and Robin Simon, who produced this show, Stephanie Phillips, our former lead producer, who is now our showrunner, Mary Jubrin, who makes sure this podcast actually gets to your ears every morning, among many other things they do, Ryan Clark and the entire sound design team, and Diana Kay, who makes sure there are ads on this podcast so that we don't go broke, even if you don't love them. From all of us, again, thank you. Tomorrow, we'll be back to telling you interesting stories about things that matter to Canadian life, hopefully for another five years. Today, I just want to sign off by saying, well, I will let me from five years ago say it, and it's proof that at least some things on this podcast haven't changed at all. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>